Heavenly Father, thank you so much, our God, for this wonderful day, oh God. Lord, we love you, God. Thank you, Lord God, that you open our heart right now, Lord God. We want to receive your presence, Lord God, today. Father God, we surrender our hearts to you, Lord God. Lord, we, Lord God, give our hearts to you right now, Lord God, whatever issues in our heart. Lord, we surrender it to you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Word of God says in Revelation 3:20. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, open the door and I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Heavenly Father, we open our heart to you right now, Lord God. You want to hear your voice, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, raise your hand to the Lord. Lord, we're hungry for you, God. We're thirsty for you, Lord God. Lord, those who seek your face are going to see you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, with your eyes and ears, Lord God. We hear you, Lord God, as we worship you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Stir up the fire in our hearts, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just, Lord, more of you, God. More of you, God, Holy Spirit. You are mighty, God. You are our deliverer. You are our strength. You are our God. You are our freedom, Lord God. We exalt you, Lord God. Lord, we worship you. We bless your name, oh God. We honor you. In Jesus' name. So I never 
to speak our hands to the Father right now. What a mighty God we serve. What a good, good Father. He takes care of the sparrows but says He cares much more for His children than the sparrows. He provides and is attuned to our needs. That's our Father.
one and that is you God and Lord as we gather together today we are reminded there is only one it's all about you father and today we choose you over anyone over any other thing we choose you we set aside any concerns. We set aside our troubles. We set aside anything and everything. And today is all about you. Today we make a choice for you, God. Father, we choose to worship you. We choose to rest in your love. We choose to eat of your word. We choose to fellowship with your Holy Spirit. We choose to set our gaze on you. We choose to dwell and soak in your presence. Father, today we choose you. Thank you, Lord. That when we choose you, all the things that we need will be added unto us. Thank you that when we choose you, the anointing flows, the joy floods our heart, your peace saturates our soul. When we choose you, you empower us. Thank you, Lord. We will shall forever be grateful. Thank you, Lord, for your presence today. We love you and we honor you. And God's people will say, Amen and Amen. Hey, hey can we give God a louder, louder clap of praise? Woo-hoo! Yay! Woo! I'd like to welcome you to our worship celebration for the day here at Lighthouse Christian Fellowship your family in the Lord. And if this is your first time to worship with us, we're so thrilled, we're so happy that you're worshiping with us. Know that you have a family in the Lord and uh, you know you have a place in the kingdom of God. And we do hope that today you will open your heart to the Lord. Or will, there'll be testimonies in a while. There'll be the sharing of the word of God. It's gonna be a great Sunday in the house of God. Amen? Come on, let's give God a clap of praise. Now we have a few announcements. Firstly, Pose Encounter class on November 21 and November 28. Now this class is very valuable because you will receive teaching that will help you walk in victory and freedom. 
Now the dates December 4 to 11 are given for water baptism. We encourage you to publicly declare that you are a follower and a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you haven't signed up for water baptism, this is your opportunity now. Go for it. Be baptized in water. So friends, that's it. That's all our announcement for today. We have a great word coming up. So sit back, just relax and enjoy the presence of God. A wonderful day to all of us. God bless you. Okay, so it's time to give. Amen. Inum katapad, it's time to give. Let me read to you 2 Corinthians 4, 7. It says here, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Now, I believe this verse also applies to our resources and our finances. It is clearly said in the Word of God that we have that whatever we have, it comes from God and not from us. You know, even in the Word of God, it says that it is God who makes us able to produce wealth. That means to say that God empowers and enables us to make a living and gather resources for our needs and even desires in this world. Isn't it right and fitting to honor God as the source of everything that we have. Amen? In uh, in the past, no, I've experienced, recently I've experienced promotions of work, financial increase, opportunities to travel, and even the privilege, you know, I consider it a privilege, a great privilege to serve the Lord in the different ministries. You know what? Let me tell you this. You wouldn't hold back in giving to God because you know that God is faithful. Amen? God is faithful. And as you give today, as you honor God today with your finances, you are confident that God is always faithful. So, dili ta mag-hold back in giving to God. Amen? So, are we excited and joyful to give today? Amen. So, come on, let us all stand. And before we give, let us pray. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are so, so good and you are so faithful, God. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who makes us able to produce wealth, to make a living, to gather our resources, God. Lord, you are the source of everything that we have. And today, this morning, God, Lord, we make the gesture of honoring you, of giving back to you what is due to you, Lord God. And thank you, Lord, for how you will fulfill your promises in our lives. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the blessing that you have in store for all of us, Lord God. Make our hearts joyful. Lord, make our hearts, Lord God, Lord, so ready and willing, Lord God, Lord, to give to you what is due to you, Lord God. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone say, Amen and Amen. We encourage the faithful giving of tithes and offerings. Giving channels are as follows. You may do a bank deposit in the following branches with the account name The Lighthouse Christian Fellowship Union Bank Rizal Branch Account number 1001-7003-9801 China Bank Recto Branch Account number 172252801-8 Metro Bank Rizal Branch Account number 0583058628159 PNB Victoria Plaza Branch Account number 4017100018799 Kindly provide a copy of your deposit slip to the Lighthouse Office for verification you may also give through GCash transfer using these numbers 0998-158-2269 or 0918-2131530 May God bless you richly as you faithfully give your tithes and offerings. 
the Lord is pleased when we do something for Him and for others. It is by living a selfless life, fully surrendered, loving God and loving people. Let us all embrace God's superior wisdom and ways as we listen to the ministry of God's Word through our radical and all-out lighthouse senior pastor, Pastor Latour Badoy. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord. God, we worship you today. Lord, you are awesome, you are worthy, you are great. And God, we give you our lives, Lord God. And Lord, we return it to you. It is a gift from you and we give it back to you out of love. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, change us today as we talk about your word. Salamat, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's children will say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is so, so good. Welcome on a beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you for coming. The Lord has a blessing for you. Could you please tell someone beside you, God has a blessing for you today. All right. The message of the Lord today is entitled, It's Not All About Me. Now, I don't know if what that, how that sounds to you. For some, definitely it sounds bad. <laughs> it sounds like bad news. Uh, it can imply in the wrong uh, kind of thinking that uh, we are not important, that God does not care or the church does not care. But on the contrary, God cares. You are very important and we care for you. And this is a message that I pray the Lord will use to set you free from a self-centered approach to life. If your approach to life is self-centered, it's not going to be the way God wants it to be. And therefore, we want to be set free from that. Amen. God's ways are different from man's ways. This is very, very important. So when we are now followers of Jesus, since we became followers of Jesus, we all need to shift our thinking into the heavenly kind of thinking. Amen? We used to live the old way with the old kind of thinking, but now let's allow the Lord to renew our minds. The Bible says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. So today we will ask the Lord to do that. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So kaiba po ang paraan ni Lord, uh, that God approaches things differently, God sees things differently, but He is correct. And when we align our thinking the way he thinks, our lives will be blessed. There was a pastor um, based in the U.S. I remember many, many years ago, I was actually subscribing to his teaching tapes. So all the way from El Paso, Texas, they would mail it uh, to, the, uh, to the Philippines. And uh, I, would, uh, I would listen to him and learn so much. And uh, one of the things that I really like in one of his teachings is this. Sabi niya, I made this prayer to God, and this is my prayer, sabi niya, Lord, whenever you and I disagree, change my mind. Whenever we disagree with God, we pray, Lord, change our minds, because God is always right, and God always knows best, amen? Don't believe everything you hear about how to be happy or how to be successful. You have to evaluate what you hear based on the sure standard of the Word of God. The next slide. In the kingdom of God, the way up is down, and the way down is up. Jesus said, not in the PowerPoint, but Jesus said, if you want to be the first, you have to be the last. And if you want to be the first, you will become the last. And Jesus emphasizes this, that the way God operates is that it is compared to human thinking like an upside down, right side up way of thinking and operating. But it is the right way. It is the way that will bring us true life and true happiness. If you want to be happy, don't focus on yourself. Could you please tell someone beside you, if you want to be happy, don't focus on yourself. The world and the human way of thinking, apart from the presence of the Word of God, teaches that if you want to be happy, then happiness is the fruit of your efforts. You think of yourself, 
You put your money for yourself. You accumulate people that will help you to achieve your goals. Everything is about you. But according to the wisdom of God, which is the truth, that if you want to be happy, focusing on yourself is not the way. In the world, the way to be happy is to focus on yourself, your needs, your wants, your interests, your rights, your preferences, your opinions, your thoughts. But in the kingdom of God, the way to be happy is to make others happy. Alam niyo po, this is where we have to allow the Lord to change our minds. Can I ask all of us to please put our hands on our right temple? Can we just make a, like a, a gesture? Parang i-shift i- natin ba? Let's ka, i- turn it a little bit. Ready? Get set? Go! <laughs> Ayon! Thank you, Lord. Let's ask the Lord to shift our minds, our thinking, because really in the world, they say, well, if you want to be happy, then yeah, why not? Use people. Love things, use people. Instead of love people, use things. But in the kingdom of God, no. Make others happy and then you will be happy. Make God happy and then you will be happy. Mark 8.35 For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Very interesting. And yet very, very true. Alright? If you will save your life, buhay ka to. Kaligayahan ko to, wag niyo akong pakialaman. <laughs> Kung gano'n ang iyong attitude, nako, you will lose your life. And there are so many people who say, well, Papa, Mama, I know you love me, but I want this guy. I want this girl. And then they end up, you know, destroyed in the process. They want money and they want it quick. And they involved in wrong things and they end up destroyed. Happy? No, miserable. That's the truth. Do you want to be happy? The secret is don't focus on yourself. Rather, focus on God and focus on others. You cannot, the next slide, you cannot be selfish or self-centered and be happy at the same time. And that is so, so true. I invite you to think about some of the more famous celebrities that you know. Actors, actresses, millionaires, uh, you know, athletes, Sports personalities, think of them. They wanted to be happy and they approached it the wrong way. And what did they get? They got only the opposite of it. The truth is, if you're selfish, you're not going to be happy. Initially, yes. But eventually, all of your sins will catch up with you. Eventually, you use people. Eventually, you realize you cannot manipulate or use everybody. Some people are smarter than you. And some people will end up manipulating you and getting uh, something that you don't even want to give away. You cannot be selfish and be happy at the same time. Could you please tell someone beside you? You cannot be selfish and happy at the same time. And it's the love of God that helps us to understand that today so we can be set free. The Lord Jesus is the best example of selfless living. Alam mo Jesus, it's amazing when you think about it. For example, Jesus, the Bible says, was loved by the sinners. They like to hang around him. Now I tell you, if the sinners like to hang around you, you must be a happy person. <laughs> the sinners don't like to hang around with people who are just dead and boring. Okay. They want someone who is truly alive, truly fulfilled, truly, truly okay. And they found that in Jesus. But anyway, what do we find? John 5.30, for example, Jesus says, I can do nothing of my own pleasure, but as I hear, so I judge and my judgment is just. For I seek not my own pleasure, but the pleasure of him that sent me. So Jesus did not live for himself. He was not uh, preoccupied with himself. He was living for God. He was living for others. He was living for a higher purpose, an eternal purpose. He was living for God and people. John 4, 34. Jesus said to his disciples, My food, my nourishment, my energy, my sustenance is to do the pleasure of him, that's the Father, who sent me and to accomplish his work. So many Jesus, this is what is what gives me life. This is what sustains me. This is what makes me happy. To live for the pleasure of the Lord. To live, to make God great and to make God known and to be a blessing to people. Jesus understood the purpose of 
The whole creation is to bring pleasure or glory to God. Revelation 4, 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Everything in this world was created for the glory of God. And Jesus said, Ako rin. Count me in, Lord. My life is for you. Everything I give, I honor you, God. How did Jesus bring pleasure to the Father? By doing the will of God. He spent time with the Lord in prayer. He helped people. He shared the word of God to them. If they were sick, he healed them. If they were hungry, he fed them. If they needed any kind of a practical help, he was there as far as he could, if he could do it. If there were demons that were causing sicknesses, depression, and so on, he drove out the demons. He helped those who could not help themselves. Jesus lived for the pleasure of God, the good of people, and he was a truly happy man. And so as I reflect on life, yeah, that's how it is. That's how it works. When we want to be happy, we focus on God and God then is glorified and we become happy as well. Loving yourself without being in love with yourself. Okay, loving yourself without being in love with yourself. This is very, very important, okay? It's okay to love yourself. In fact, the Lord commands you <laughs> to love yourself. Love others as you love yourself so you cannot love others if you don't love yourself okay but some people do not just love themselves they are in love with themselves meaning all they think about all they care about is themselves they get what they want they do what they want they dress the way they want they are able to anything it's everything about them from the time they wake up to the time they sleep, all they think is them. Their image, their plans, their dreams, how people praise them and so on. That is a sure way to become miserable. While it is good and right to take care of ourselves, it is not the desire of God that we become so absorbed in ourselves that we basically live only for ourselves. That's not the will of God. We should love ourselves without being in love with ourselves. So at this point, I want us to kind of just have a mental uh, uh, thinking that would help us to process this, okay? So let's say, uh, let's have a spectrum from zero to ten. Zero being very selfish, ten becoming, being so selfless, all right? The question is, saan ka? Are you zero or one or two, very selfish? Or are you like 10, that very selfless and so on? Where are you in the spectrum? Because the way you answer that, your answer to that will be the basis of your response today. Uh, to help you and me do that, may mga tanong. Let's ask ourselves these questions. How much time do you spend on interests or concerns other than for yourself? How much time do you spend for things other than for yourself? How much money do you put into causes or things other than your food, clothes, house, car, and business? How much thought do you give to those things? Meron pa bang lugar yan kahit konti lang sa isip na puso mo or wala na? What do you think of most often? What are your dreams? What makes you laugh? What makes you cry? These are things that will help us. So we need to make some adjustments. Now, let me just say, okay, it's also possible to become so selfless that you are actually also not living the way God wants you to live. So people who are in ministry uh, need to be very careful that they don't end up giving so much that they actually fail to take care of themselves. So if you ask me, Confession time, that's where I am. I'm trying to learn to love myself. I'm trying to learn to take care of myself because although I've done that, I think I've not done enough. So that we need to do, okay? On the other hand, if we are so selfish, everything is just about us, okay? Everything, let's say if you like it cold, you know, I mean, and maybe I'm, I'm guilty here. You want the aircon to be cold even if others 
really hate it. Sobrang lamig naman. <laughs> or if you like some spicy food, you don't care if they suffer all of the spice. You just like to eat spicy food and so on. You have to kind of find a healthy balance uh, in that. Or you can imagine with me uh, a piece of paper, uh, a bond paper or a yellow paper, and you could put a line to, to, to divide the left side and the right side. And then on the left side, you say, what I do for myself. Lagin mo ng heading, what I do for myself. On the right side, you say, what I do for others, for God and others. Okay? What I do for myself, what I do for God and others. And then you begin to write down, what do you do for yourself? Okay? You buy your favorite clothes, etc., etc. You you know you, you you do what you like, okay? And then sa kabila, what you do for God and others. If the resulting list will be very long <laughs> for what you do for yourself and very short for what you do for God and others, something needs to change because if that lifestyle does not change, eventually it will catch up with you. Nobody likes selfish people. Nobody likes, eventually people will find out, you don't respect anyone. You don't even like anyone. You just like people to be good to you so they can give you something. But in the end, you're really about yourself. You don't really care about other people. Once people begin to know that, eventually, they, some will try to hold on for your money or anything. But those who really care about relationships will leave you. And that is the danger of it. And of course, the favor of God will not be there. The anointing of God will not be there. And God, that is a very dangerous situation. All right. If you want to be happy, love God and love people. All right. Now, love God, love people in this family, spiritual family is like our purpose in life. We read that, we hear that, we speak that, etc. We post that on social media. But really, it is a summary of how you and I are supposed to live. It is a summary of the way we are to glorify God and we are to be a blessing to people. It is a summary of eventually how we secure the best life that we could ever have. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. And Jesus said to that person he was talking to, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so this this is a summary of all of the scriptures. This, ito ang kiniyang sumari sa tanang Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, all of the New Testament, ultimately from Matthew to Revelation. This is a summary of it all. If you want to live, it to glorify God and, and eventually make yourself happy and be a blessing, you will love God and you will love people. You and I will find true happiness as we give our lives away. Amen. I remember um, um, I have a cousin who whenever meron kami mga gatherings and so on, uh, whenever ma-meet ko siya, I will always find her, you know, not trying hard to socialize, not trying hard to show off anything, not trying hard to call attention to herself. But she was always, as far as I could observe, very, very happy, very, very at peace, very, very content. And, uh, you know, when I, when I was, I was observing, I sabi ko, wow, parang, ang sarap ng anong buhay. Wala kang tinatry na i, 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 kunin sa tao. I praise mo naman ako para I feel good. <laughs> or, or praise mo naman ako para I feel important. Or, you know, could you please do something for me to make me, you know, feel I'm okay and so on. And, and, and I was reflecting on that for years and I said, sabi ko, wow, masarap ang ganong klaseng buhay that you are living in a way that you are just really happy. You're just content. You're not looking for too many things, too much attention, too much money, too much power or anything. So, basta kanya, okay lang, alright? And she happens to be, and this relates to my next illustration, she happens to be a missionary. Okay? And to me, nakita ko yung, 
Happy siya sa kanyang buhay. Happy siya sa nangyayari sa kanya. Fulfilled siya. Alright? Now, the next illustration is related to that. Okay? So, some researches were done sa satisfaction level ng employees ng for-profit or commercial organizations. Anything na that, that, that exists to make money. You no know, corporations and so on. And then, uh, the, the, those who work for not for-profit or non-profit organizations, NGOs, churches, etc. So they did studies and you know what they found? They found that the people who work for the non-profit organizations, they have a higher satisfaction level. Those who work for companies that exist to make money have a lower satisfaction level. And when you think about that, you realize this is exactly what the Bible is saying. That if you, if you live only for yourself to make yourself great, rich, powerful, better than others, then you will only get that. You will lose your life if you try to save it. But if you save your life, you will find it. So we say, and please mark this on the next slide, happiness is a byproduct of a life lived for God and others. Happiness is a byproduct of a life lived for God and others. What's a byproduct? Let's say uh, for lumber, you cut, you cut the tree and then you cut the pieces of the tree into into uh in the wood slabs, and then by pro the the product is the wood, na binibenta mo. But the byproduct are like sawdust and other things. All right, you do not set out to produce sawdust, but if you make wood, you will produce sawdust as a secondary product. Okay, that is the way to happiness. The way to happiness is not to pursue it. As the main goal of life, your, your pursuit is to honor the Lord and to glorify the Lord. And when you do that without trying to, you end up happy and fulfilled. Byproduct lang po yun. Kaya it's not an accident that people who work for non-profit organizations have a higher, higher satisfaction level. You know, what are those who work for just for money or fame or power like that? Because the philosophy, the thinking, the values that drive them are very, very different. And this is something we want to think about today. It is God's desire that you give your life away to God and people. Ito po ang gusto ni Lord, that you give your life away to God and people. Yung there, if you're 25 today, then for the rest of your life, Take care of yourself. Love yourself, okay? But more than that, give honor to the Lord. Serve Him. You know, honor Him. And then take care of people. Love people. Serve people, etc. Help them to find God, to enjoy life, etc. And then you will be happy. Give your life away. That's how it is. Now, Philippians 2, 4, for example, says, Each of you should be concerned not only about your own interests, but also about, but about the interests of others as well. So sabi dito, you and I should be concerned, should be thinking about, should be investing in, should be engaged in activities that are good not just for ourselves, but they're also good for others. They have a benefit for others outside of us. You see, you and I were made by God to live for causes and interests that are bigger and beyond ourselves. Kaya, kaya po, pag, pag ang ating uh, orientation about us lang, talagang mababa lang ang ating satisfaction level. But if we know we're pursuing something bigger, greater, even eternal, then we'll be even more satisfied. And so the Lord commands you and me, think of, be concerned about, not just your own interest, how I can be famous, how I can become great, how I can be rich, how I can be number one, etc. But think of God, think of others. Jesus again, our greatest example, Philippians 2, 7 to 9. Jesus Christ emptied himself by taking on the form of a slave, by looking at other men. By the way, the word slave there is the correct Bible translation, okay? Not servant, but slave. By looking at other, me other men and by sharing 
in human nature. As a result, God exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. You want to be exalted? You want to be lifted up? You want to be he display can Lord ba? You know, you want to be great? Be like this. Be like Jesus. He, 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 he gave us life. And so he was exalted. In fact, the Bible actually says that we are to be like him. And so when you honor God, when you live not for yourself, Jesus died for you and for me and for humanity. A painful, shameful death, crucifixion. He did that. He allowed that. He voluntarily gave up his life so you and I can be saved. And that's why God exalted him. Um, and there are so many needs around us. You know, if you watch the news, no, bad news sells better. So there's so much bad news. <laughs> they highlight the But still, the point is, hindi naman nila inibento yun. Meron talagang nangyaring mga negative. And you and I are called by God to at least do something to meet needs around us. I remember uh, for about 10 years, Pastor Le and I lived in Ecoland, phase one. And there is a covered court there. And a uh, covered court, Normally, and in that case, this is the case, there is like a stage where they can have programs sa barangay, di ba? And so on. And then there are side rooms. Side rooms. All right? There was a season that there was a, a, a lady who, who, alam mo, may diprensya siya, no? like, like not, not okay mentally, uh, who was living there. So he, he converted the side room to become her home. Kumbaga. And uh, so for a few times, I was, if I have free time, I try to uh, play basketball, just shoot balls, etc. If people are there, then we play. And then like a burden ako, sabi ko, I must, I cannot just come here. I've been here once, twice, or maybe three times and done nothing uh, because I, I try to play frequently. And then, so what I did, I, I got a Bible, a Bisaya Bible, and then I got some money and I, I gave I gave it to her. And uh, so, kinausap ko siya and so on. And, more, and then when I came back after maybe two or three days again, I tried to talk and check kung papaano and so on. Uh, but the point is, and later on actually, what she did was she sold the Bible. <laughs> so that she can, she can have some money. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. The point is, there are so many around us and we cannot solve all of them, but we can at least do some little things to make the world a better place to help people experience the love of God. Amen? Even if people don't respond, let's just do it. Amen? Come on. Sige, let's clap our hands to the Lord. And the Lord today wants to remind us of the story of the Good Samaritan. This is more than a good Bible story, Sunday school story. This is a story for you and for me. Uh, Luke 10, 30 to 37. Jesus replied to the, the man who was trying to justify himself. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Gikawatan uh, siya, gikulata siya, almost dead. 31, now by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, the Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Gilikayan nila. 33, but a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and found, uh, bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and he brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and he gave them to the innkeeper saying, take care of him and whatever you spend, I will repay you when I come back. You know, this is a very, very solemn story because it's just a reminder for you and me, in, including me, really. This is a reminder that we can, in the case of the priest and the Levite, become so busy trying to do the work of God, trying to be a good husband, a good wife, an excellent student, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but neglect people. And I know I've been guilty more than once, many times, of being too busy to pause, to stop, to be disturbed. But this Samaritan decided that he would do something. So he brought, so the overnight sila, because his, the next day the Bible says he was still there. And then he already paid, of course, for the stay and the food. And then he left money so that uh, the care would be given to the wounded and the sabi niya, when I return, I will pay you extra. Whatever you uh, spend more, I will pay. So he was willing to really, really do something. And uh, this is something that you and I really, really need to take care of. In fact, I just remembered as I was sharing, 
there was a seminary, a theological seminary, where in their preaching class, they were told, preach on the good story of the Good Samaritan. True story po ito. This really happened. And then along the on the road going to the hall where the, the preaching contest was supposed to happen, they put, they put someone who was very needy and very, very, you know, talagang kailangan niya ng tulong, marami siyang, the, the way, ang itsura niya, and so on, everything was calling for attention. So it was a test. It was a test. And I tell you, most students who were participating in the preaching contest neglected the person. They have an appointment. They will preach. They want to win or whatever. Get, get some good grades. But the, it is a reminder for you and for me. The point is, you and I should not be so busy so as to neglect. And if we've done that, then let's just change for the glory of God. But a Samaritan came and he did something. He cared. He sacrificed, etc. By the way, in olden times, yung mga ganun na klaseng mga magnanakaw, kidnapper, and so on, normally when they attack, they, they would like in this particular part of Israel, they would not stay only for one victim. It was common that they would attack one and then whoever would stop to help that one, that's the next victim, etc. So to even stop is already to put yourself in danger. But this person really cared. He, he spent money. He gave time because he wanted to be a blessing. He wanted to help. He had compassion. Verse 37. And Jesus said to him, the man who was trying to rationalize, who, who can I help? Who can I show kindness to? And this is God's word for you and for me as well. You go and do likewise. Sabi, kayo rin. Ikaw. Ikaw din. Gawin mo rin. You also go and do likewise. Meaning, if you see people around you in need, you see people around you with problems, be willing to pause. Be willing to be late for your next appointment. Be willing to, you know, to be disturbed in your schedule to do something. This is the way Jesus lived. Jesus had time for people in need. He was going somewhere and someone would ask for help. He would pause and release a healing. He was, he was always available. He was very busy, but he made time. He gave time so that people can experience the love of God. And so let's do that as well. Sana po, may makita tayo na ilangan tulungan natin. Alam natin may mga tao na hindi nila kilala si Lord. Bigyan natin sila ng word of God. Uh, the greater gift, the greatest gift that we can give to people is the gift of the knowledge of God leading to salvation. That is the most important. John 5.24, Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth. Those who hear my words and believe in Him who sent me have eternal life, they will not be judged, but have already passed from death to life. So the greatest need of people, and therefore the greatest contribution we can give to people, is the knowledge of God leading to eternal life. Yan po ang pinaka-importante na kailangan natin gawin. And so we, even though, honestly, we're busy and so on, dapat po ilagay po natin sa schedule natin yan. Hindi talaga madali, pero tutulungan tayo Lord, kaya naman nating gawin. No? Pastor Lea and I are so happy. Um, one night, uh, maybe about, I don't know, seven, eight weeks ago, after the fifth service, so it was already eight o'clock, we were going home, we drove, uh, we, we went to a restaurant to eat. Uh, wing boss and so on and so and we, when we were there we were so tired five sun, five services etc but uh so we you know we ordered etc and then we gave out fly flyers ng each one change one oh yeah ten kayo maganda to try nyo lang no pressure but if you could come it would be a blessing to you all right so uh the the co-owner the 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 lady uh eventually came to lighthouse eventually went to the encounter god weekend was baptized yesterday and will testify this afternoon at the 4 and 6 p.m. service. Actually, in the video, she was there, all right? But the point is, we did not do much. Nagabut lang kami ng flyer. We just said a few sentences saying, you, you, you know, come, it will be a blessing. It will change your life. Come, no pressure, but if you can come, it will be good, etc. And the Lord changed their lives, amen? And so very, very important that we do that. We just pause. You're tired. Five services, 8 a.m. you're here. Well, 8.30, we're here. 
uh, 840 and then we leave 8 to 8 p.m., 12 hours almost. But the Lord helps us to still care and still do something. Decide to be a blessing to somebody else every day. Decide to be a blessing to somebody else every day. So can we make it a matter of a lifestyle by the grace of God that we are willing to do something? So every day you do something for yourself, right? Every day. You like to do Facebook, Instagram, so you spend time with that every day, etc. Can we decide every day we'll do something for others? Every day we'll do something for God. Every day we'll try to reach out. Every day we'll try to be involved, etc. And let's do that. And by the grace of God, uh, we can we can uh, be used by the Lord to touch lives. Pray for people. Encourage them with the word of God. Do practical things for them for the glory of God. And their lives will be changed. Amen. Sometimes it's just being available. Alam po, for me, I, how I wish I could really do a lot of inviting and so on and evangelizing, but I don't know, in the way things are, at least so far, I'm so busy, so normally I am able to evangelize. So this is the truth. I, again, maybe I should improve, okay? But normally I'm able to do that. If I'm on the taxi, I evangelize a taxi driver. If I'm in the restaurant, I try to, you know, talk to the person, uh, the waiter. If if uh, I'm getting a massage, then the massage. Anywhere you go where you have the chance to be with people, just do that, you know? And so recently, one of the things that I've been doing is to play table tennis. So, meron pong table tennis gym dito sa Davao. And so I met this uh, this person, and eventually naka naka connect kami sa messenger and so on. So last Sunday uh, he came and he joined. He attended the service. Amen. So that is that is really good. And there is another person na kalaro ko siya. Sabi niya paso parang gusto ko rin po bunta sa church niyo. Sabi kasi kaya you uh, feel free to come and so on. But sometimes it's just being a friend to people and just saying something good, just being kind to them and so on. Uh, and, and the Lord would just use that. And the Lord would just allow that to become an instrument for His glory and honor. Amen. And in the end, masaya siya. Masaya si Lord. Ayan rin masaya. Masaya lahat. Amen. Palapakan natin si Lord. Can we all stand please? Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Can we all rise? And if you can close your eyes, that would be good. Uh, if you can raise your hands, it would be better. Let's pray to the Lord this morning. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that you know what's best and you want what's best for us. Forgive us for living for ourselves only. And Lord, right now we pray, really change our minds and really change our hearts and help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord. To really give time for you, for others. And God, continue to transform the way we think. Continue to transform the way, Lord, we, uh, we prioritize our scheduling, our willingness to stop for the one. Lord, we pray the people in need around us. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, but just tell the Lord, God, help me to live for you. Help me to love you and love people. It's not about me. It's about you and others. But thank you. As I lose my life, I am able to save it. As I make myself the last, I end up becoming the first. That's the wisdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be given to you as well. So Father, we thank you. We honor you, God. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Today, if you're here and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, Jesus is not your Savior. Jesus is not your Lord. Maybe you're a guest today. We thank you for coming. But today, the Lord really wants you to have an opportunity to have a relationship with Him, a real living relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Today, the Lord wants to remind you He loves you. And the Lord wants to remind you He loved you so much. He sacrifices one and only in Jesus who died so for the forgiveness of your sins on the cross at Calvary about 2,000 years ago in Israel. Jesus died so that you can be forgiven, so that your life can become acceptable to God, so that instead of curse and the anger of God, you will have blessing and the favor of God. Today, the Lord is calling you to give your life to Him, to surrender the control of your life to Him. 
Bethlehem. Ito ganyan mong kinaboy sa ginoong Yesus. Piyaan lang sala. Magsali kang Yesus para sa imong kalawasan. Today, if you want to give your life to the Lord, you just have to tell Him today. By the way, He is beside you right now. Through the Holy Spirit, He is listening to you. Talk to Him. Talk to your best friend. Just tell Him, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, cleanse me. Jesus, I give the control of my life to you. Come into my life. Take over. I trust you. Not the religious things I do. Not the religion that I am part of. I trust you as the Lord and the Savior. I give to you the control of my life today. Come on, if you know, you need to make that prayer. If you know, you need to make that decision. If you know, you need to make that change in your life. This is the most urgent thing. This is the most important thing right now. In fact, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, this is the only thing that matters at this point. This is the only thing. Because without this, everything else will fail. But with this, you can build into something really great. A wonderful life with God. So would you surrender your life to God? Just tell Him, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But you died for me, Jesus. Come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Not religion, not good works. But you alone, Jesus. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. Come, take over. Come, take over my life. Come and say that to the Lord if you know you need to pray that today. And God will be gracious to forgive. God will be gracious to heal you. Thank you, God. If you have a need or prayer request, maybe a financial need, or maybe a prayer request for your family or your health, or something with your job, your business, your studies, your ministry, would you raise your hand right now? And we will pray to the Lord. We will pray to the good, good Father to bless you. And you know what? He really wants to bless you. He is a giver. He is the greatest giver. So raise your hands and believe the Lord and receive His blessing today. Father in heaven, would you bless those who are raising their hands? Would you bless them financially? Would you bless their families, Lord? God, if they're working, would you bless them? Lord, if they're studying, would you bless their studies? Those engaged in business, would you grant them prosperity and increase? Those who are in ministry of any kind, we pray bless them with fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, bless each and every one, God, we pray. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Everyone raise your hands for the final blessing as we will now be dismissed. Receive the blessing of the Lord. And now the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and with favor. And the Lord bless you with His peace. God, we thank you. You're a good, good Father. We are loved by you. And God, we honor you. We go with joy and courage and confidence. Knowing that the best days of our lives, regardless of our age or background or present situation, the best days of our lives, we declare by faith, are still ahead of us, not behind us. Great things are still in store. God, we thank you now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone would say, Amen and Amen.